Today we're going to be taking a look at two of the most popular sim racing wheels on the market with the G29 from Logitech and the T300 RS GT from Thrustmaster. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. So you might be wondering why I'm reviewing these two specific models when they're technically in two different tiers and one bought brand new are sold at two different price points with the Logitech being more of an entry level wheel and the Thrustmaster being more of a mid level wheel. Which at the time of making this video, the G29 is currently on sale on Amazon for $226 versus the Thrustmaster which is selling for $449. So to answer that question, the goal of this video is to help two groups of people. Group 1 is for those of you that already have the Logitech wheel, but you're wondering if it's worth the extra money to finally upgrade to the Thrustmaster. For Group 2, you don't have a wheel yet, but you're wanting to get into the world of sim racing and you're not sure if the Thrustmaster is worth the extra money over the Logitech. So let's find out. Now let's take a look at the pros and cons of each wheel, starting with the Logitech G29. The first pro for this wheel is a huge one, and it's the price. The more affordable price of the G29 allows more people to get into the world of sim racing that aren't too sure yet if it's really for them or not and don't want to throw down a ton of cash for something that they might not love. And don't let the cheaper price make you think that it's a horrible wheel that's unusable because it's definitely not. Which leads us to the second pro on the list and that's build quality. The wheel is constructed of hard plastic, metal, and genuine leather. And I have to say that the genuine leather really does feel nice in the hands and definitely adds to the overall feel of the wheel. The G29 also has a ton of buttons on it, including this weird red dial thing, all of which can be remapped on PC through Logitech's gaming software. The wheel features 900 degrees of rotation, a Hall Effect steering sensor, which should mean that you shouldn't have any problems with accuracy, a rev indicator light, and it also features a dual motor force feedback system, which is helical gear driven, which we'll get into a little bit later, and an overheat safeguard. It also has an integrated desk clamping system, which is pretty simple to use. All you do is twist two knobs, which tightens the clamps under your desk and you're good to go. Another useful feature of this wheel base is that underneath it, there is a cable management area where you plug in your shifter, your pedals, and all that good stuff. They also have a cable runway thing where you can run your cables through so that way you don't bend them and break them. And the third pro is the foot pedals. The pedals that come with the G29 are constructed of steel with the base being made of plastic. And while they might not be the best pedals out there, they're definitely usable and remember that you get what you pay for and it's pretty cool that they included a clutch pedal. A lot of wheels in this price point typically only come with two pedals being the brake and the gas. Regarding how the pedals feel when they're pressed down, the gas and the clutch feel perfectly fine to me in my personal opinion. The brake pedal is the one that you'll hear the most complaints about and I have to agree that it definitely took quite some time to get used to. Also, be careful of the cord in the back. I don't see many videos talk about it, probably because it's common sense, but I didn't notice the cord and pushed it up against the wall, and now it's really, really bent and the bare wires are exposed. For those of you that have carpet on the underside of the foot pedals, there is a carpet grabber spike thing. Um, I didn't try it out, but I have heard that it's pretty useful. Now it's time for the cons. And this first one is personally what drove me to get the T300RS. And that is that the wheel is gear driven and technically it's not a 100% con it's just for me personally I like to drift and to be able to drift you have to counter steer while the wheel being gear driven it doesn't produce enough force to counter steer on its own well it does but very slowly so you end up having to toss or throw the wheel to try and guide it so that's not to say that you can't drift with this wheel it just makes it harder also, with it being gear driven, it's not as smooth as a belt driven one like the T300. You can definitely tell that there's like gears in it or something as you turn it. I wouldn't call it notchy, it's not quite that bad, but it's definitely noticeable. Also, this thing is very loud, which you'll hear in a little bit when we do the sound test. But if you live with other people and you like to play late at night, you might want to reconsider. And speaking of how loud this thing is, that is actually the second con, which is noise. With the pros and cons of the G29 out of the way, let's get to the sound test for it.
So now with the Logitech out of the way, let's take a look at the Thrustmaster. So starting off with the pros for this wheel, I'd say like the Logitech that the build quality is really good. I've been using this wheel for the past year or so, and you can tell that it feels really well made. It doesn't really feel like a toy in the hand, it feels really sturdy and it just feels good. Now if I had to compare the two, I would say that this wheel feels a little bit better than the Logitech one. Not saying that the G29 doesn't feel good, it's just that this one feels a little bit higher quality. However, one thing that I wish that this wheel had that the Logitech does have is that leather material. This one uses a rubberized grip, and while it's not bad, I just prefer that leather feeling that the G29 has. The T300 RS GT is 11 inches in diameter, constructed of brushed metal, and has that rubberized texture around the entire wheel. Now one thing you'll notice about the T300 RS GT is that it's a lot more bare bones compared to the G29. There's not nearly as many buttons and there is no rev indicator light. When using this on PC, there is software that you can download in which it lets you test and change various force feedback settings as well. This wheel also has 1080 degrees of rotation. It's powered by a brushless motor, which should help you keep quiet while in use, as well as help maintain the force feedback intensity even during long gaming sessions. Now speaking of force feedback systems, this one is dual belt driven, which means it's really smooth without any of the jolting movements that you get in a gear driven one, and also makes the force feedback a lot more powerful and more realistic feeling. It also uses Thrustmaster's own proprietary Hall Effect system. And one last cool thing about the T300 RS series is that it features a really easy wheel changing system, so you can take the stock wheel off and replace it with any of the other Thrustmaster wheels that better suit your racing style. Like the G29, the T300 RS GT also includes a desk clamp in the box, which I actually think does a little bit better of a job at keeping the wheel securely clamped to the desk. On the back side of the base is where you'll find the slots for your power cable, shifter, and pedals, as well as a hardwired USB cord that connects to either your PC or console. However, there isn't any cable management like the G29 has. Also, if you do decide that you want to mount this on a wheel stand or rig instead, the desk clamp is completely removable. Now, the next pro for this wheel would have to be tied with the G29, and that's the foot pedals. Now, personally, I really didn't notice too giant of a difference between the two different pedal sets. I will say, however, that the Thrustmaster brake did feel a little bit better to me and not quite as stiff as the Logitech one. And also, just like the G29, the clutch pedal does come included. Now, where these pedals do differentiate from the G29 is that a rubber conical brake mod comes included so you can change the feel of the brakes, say, if you don't like how it feels out of the box. And then probably one of my favorite things is that on the underside, while there isn't a carpet grabber, there is cable management that runs the wire out to either left or right of the pedals. This is a really big plus for me because as you've seen with my G29, uh, that wasn't the case. Also, you are able to detach the gas and clutch pedal and reposition them a little bit to the left or right just to help with comfortability. And last but not least, the pedals are constructed of steel. Now the last but biggest pro for the T300 RS GT is the force feedback system. Unlike the G29's gear-driven force feedback system that kind of lacks on power and gave me issues when drifting, this one's double belt-driven force feedback system is so much better and is honestly a night and day difference for me. Not only is it a lot more powerful and intense, but the feedback that it delivers is so much more smooth and just feels so much better. If you're planning to drift, you definitely won't have to be throwing this wheel to counter steer like you do with the G29. Just make sure that you have it properly mounted, otherwise this could happen. Chill. Now there really isn't too many cons for this wheel in my opinion, but if I did have to choose one, I'd say that that textured rubber is at the top of my list. While it's not bad, it's not amazing either. Personally, when I first got the wheel, I noticed that my hands would get a little kind of sticky when using the wheel for a while, and I have had friends mention the same thing to me as well. But as I've used the wheel more, it doesn't happen anymore. It definitely would have been a lot better to have some sort of leather instead, but I guess that would affect the price even more. Now, the second and last con, I wouldn't necessarily call it a con, but it's the price. While yes, it is more expensive than the G29, it is a lot cheaper than the more top of the line wheels that can range all the way up into the thousands of dollars. And now with the pros and cons out of the way, let's go ahead and do the sound test before moving on to the conclusion.
So in conclusion, I'd say that if you're able to find a G29 for around 200, 220, maybe $250, then it's a good purchase, especially as a beginner, just to get your foot into the world of sim racing and see if it's something you enjoy or not. But at the full MSRP of $399, I definitely say that it's worth the extra 50 bucks or so to try and upgrade to the T300 RS GT if possible. The more accurate and powerful force feedback, in my opinion, is worth the extra price alone. Hopefully you found the video useful, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.